us to introduce ourselves. Well, my name is Hazel, Ambrose Hazel. And to my left, my wife, Mary Ann. And together, we are the Undertakers. For now, we are to take you upon a journey all the way back to the Victorian times where death was ever present. Death was a frequent visitor to all of your homes. Death was no stranger to any of you. Death was indeed a fact of life. Was it not true that in the very midst of life we do indeed live in death? For it is a time where half of all the children born died before their first birthdays. Where of those who survived, less than half lived beyond their fifth birthday. Uh, what age are you, miss? Seven, or you've done well. <laughs> where, if you lived in the countryside, you may expect to live all of 38 years on average. Whilst, if you lived in one of those great manufacturing towns, Birmingham, Leeds, Manchester and such like, on average, you may expect to live all of 17 years. So death was ever present. And when a death occurred in your homes, there are certain things you're expected to do. First, you will stop the clocks ticking at the very moment of death. Then, you will draw the curtains and not pull them back until after the funeral. You will extinguish all the fires. And you will place a cloth over all of the mirrors so that the reflection does not confuse the soul of the dear departed as they ascend above. And then you'll send for the undertaker. And we, we will tell you of all you may have to give your dear departed a good send-off. For you do not want to be known for giving your dear departed a poor or a cheap funeral. For your neighbours, your relatives, your friends, they will all gossip about the cheap nature of your funeral. Would you have it said of your dearly departed? Whose are those bones who rattle over the stones? For it is only a pauper who nobody owns. And so, we will encourage you to spend, indeed, we, we undertakers, we are often accused of encouraging people to spend beyond the depth of their pockets for our own profits. Rubbish! <laughs> Rubbish. It is our duty to stop you from embarrassing yourself. And we, we can supply all. For when, when a lady does become a widow, she will descend into the darkest, deepest mourning, wearing clothing of the darkest, deepest black, fabric having no shine or lustre. This is first mourning for one year and one day. Then, she will go into second morning, wearing clothing of the deepest, darkest black. But now, the fabric has a shine or a lustre. This is second morning for a further year and a day. And then, she will clothe herself in fabrics of purple or mauve or lilac for yet a further year. This is mitigated mourning. And we, 
we can supply all for the best morning fabric is crepe, Italian silk. It is very, very expensive. If, if you cannot afford crepe, then we may furnish you with bombazine. Bombazine is English crepe. A wool and silk mix, which is slightly cheaper. And if you cannot afford bombazine, I may supply you with dyed cotton or calico, which is very, very cheap. And as for the coffin, the cheapest coffin I may furnish is all of three and sixpence. In your time, that is seventeen and a half pence. And you might think, what a bargain! A coffin for seventeen and a half pennies, but let me tell you, that is most of your weekly wage. And thus, many families to keep the bodies of their dearly departed at home whilst they attempted to scrape the pennies together, keeping it there for far longer than was good for. The dead of the poor are buried upon a Sunday. Sunday is a day of rest. You may attend a funeral without losing a day's pay. And so the streets of our towns upon a Sunday are thronged with the funerals of the poor, sheep coffins, carried by members of the family, or at best pushed on a tradesman's cart, with the mourners walking behind. This is termed a walking funeral, and it is very, very cheap. But just imagine. A splendid funeral of the wealthy. The wealthy, they do bury their dead any day of the week, but never upon a Sunday. For Sunday is the preserve of the poor. So imagine a great hearse with its etched glass windows, great plumes of feathers upon its roof, and then the horses in twos. In fours, in sixes, these horses are richly comparisoned in black with plumes of feathers upon their heads and then coming behind. Professional mourners, mutes, men with dour faces, just like yours, sir. Right. <laughs> there with their mourning sashes and their weepers upon their hats, these. Professional mourners. Solemnly follow the hearse. And I can supply mutes in as great a number as your pocket will permit. Let us not forget the Charles Dickens Oliver Twist. He was employed as a mute for the funerals of children but was sacked, for it was said his face was far too pleasant. Ah! Nobody'd say that of you lot, would they? <laughs> so there it is. A great funeral procession. The hearse, the mutes, the mourning coaches wending its way out to those great cities of the dead. And when the hearse arrives at the cemetery, the coffin is drawn forth, and the pallbearers take post. The pall is the cloth that symbolically covers the coffin. It is taken from the word pallium. Pallium is a soldier's cloak within which he is wrapped and buried on the field of battle. Pole bearers at each corner. If it is a young man that is dead, the pole bearers are young men. 
If it is a young woman who is dead, the pallbearers are ladies. If it is a child that is dead, the pallbearers are children. And beneath, out of sight, you have the underbearers who carry the casket, take it to its place of final repose. It is a splendid sight. And Mrs. Hazel and I, we would be delighted to wait upon any of you when that moment does arise. For in truth, we never know the hour. And by looking at some of you, it ain't that far away. So, now, would you invite the little ones, and perhaps the not so little ones, to come forth and take part in our Victorian funeral procession. There are costumes for all. And ladies and gentlemen, it does make a splendid photo opportunity. So be pleased to come forth and take part in Great Aunt Eliza's funeral procession. <laughs> <laughs>